I know early, very early on, before we had a little bit more fidelity here, I asked you, and you're like, eh, it's probably a comet. Is like, is it becoming less and less likely of a comet here in, in your eyes? Uh, for now, I, I rank it four on, on the scale that I define that is called the lobe scale, where zero is a natural object and 10 is a technological object. But For months, 3i Atlas drifted silently across the outer solar system, a ghost of ice and dust, catalogued like countless others. We thought we knew what it was, another long-period comet, ancient, inert, trailing the fossil remains of its birth. But then it changed. First came the glow. Faint at first, almost imperceptible, a soft green halo began to shimmer around its coma. Then it intensified, spreading, pulsating, like something waking up. And that's where the real mystery begins, because comets glow green for one reason. C2, diatomic carbon, fluorescing under solar radiation at exactly 518 nanometers. We've seen it before. It's textbook. But according to spectroscopic data, 3i Atlas shouldn't be glowing at all. It doesn't have enough C2, not nearly enough. It started in late July. A bloom, not gradual, not predictable. A violent expansion. Astronomers watched as the coma around 3i Atlas didn't just grow. It surged, swelling in bursts, uneven and erratic, until by mid-August, it had ballooned to nearly half the diameter of the sun. But what formed inside that coma is even stranger. Using polarimetry, a way of measuring how light scatters through space dust, researchers noticed something deeply unnatural. The light wasn't scattering randomly, it was polarized, and worse, it was organized. This wasn't a cloud, it was a structure. The coma revealed bands of charge, zones of shifting polarity, and rings of magnetic order. Patterns no normal comet should produce. Some areas scattered light with positive polarization, others with negative, forming what physicists call a double-layer plasma, one of the telltale signs of a complex active field. At its center, silence. A calm, hollow core, perfectly symmetrical, stable, still. It was as if the coma wasn't reacting to sunlight, it was responding to it, not just shaped by radiation, but by magnetic and electric fields. Something deeper. This wasn't a snowball venting gas. This was a plasma system, growing, evolving, adapting. Comets usually follow a predictable polarization curve, negative at low solar phase angles, positive at higher ones. It's a consistent arc, a fingerprint. But 3i Atlas breaks the curve. Data from August showed an anomaly at just seven degrees, the angle between the sun, the object, and Earth. Most comets here measure around 1.5% linear polarization. 3i Atlas minuses 2.9%. That's extreme. Even Hale-Bopp, the massive comet from 1997, only dipped to minuses 2%. But it's not just the dip. The inflection point, where comets switch from negative to positive, usually occurs around 20 degrees. For 3i Atlas, it flipped at 16.8. Too early. Abrupt. The whole curve is skewed. Lower at low angles, higher at high ones. And when astronomers compared it to known objects, one match stood out. TNOs, trans-Neptunian objects, frozen, distant bodies that orbit far beyond Neptune. TNOs share a similar dip, the same curve, the same strange polarization. But there's a catch. TNO data is incomplete. We only observe them at low angles, too far for accurate readings. Their full polarization curves are theoretical, yet somehow 3i Atlas matches them perfectly. So what does that mean? It means this object, now speeding toward the inner solar system at over 67 kilometers per second, may not be a comet at all. It might be a fragment 
of a trans-Neptunian world, or something worse, a new class of object entirely. That would explain the red surface tones, the coma's strange structure, and its extreme polarization. But it wouldn't explain the glow, or the speed, or why it's changing. Because 3i Atlas isn't just reacting to heat, it's evolving, its coma shifting in real time, its polarization changes depending on angle, on light, on time. The coma isn't just gas and dust, it's an active field, and it might be intentional. Then came September 7, 2025, the night of the lunar eclipse. A team of astronomers in the Atacama Desert turned their spectrometers toward 3i Atlas. Under the copper-red glow of Earth's shadowed moon, they saw something that shouldn't exist. A vivid green halo. Not a camera artifact, not a reflection, not noise. A measurable emerald corona, clear and sharp. The unmistakable signature of diatomic carbon. But that makes no sense. Earlier readings, from July and August, showed low carbon content, far too low to create this level of fluorescence. So what changed? One theory. 3i Atlas is shedding a second layer, deeper pockets of exotic material trapped beneath its crust, now reactivated by solar heat. Subsurface CO2, frozen hydrocarbons, maybe even nitrides, released, ionized, transformed. But even that doesn't fully explain the pattern, because the glow isn't diffuse. It's not just spreading gas. The green halo is structured. It has zones of brightness, layers, even edges, like it's being shaped by invisible hands. Some believe we're not seeing fluorescence at all, but plasma excitation. A charged field reacting with solar wind in ways we've never recorded. It doesn't just reflect light, it generates it. This echoes a ghost from the past, Borisov, the first known interstellar comet in 2019. Borisov displayed anomalies too, unexpected CO2, a dense coma, odd polarization. But it never glowed like this. 3 Atlas is different, more dynamic, more unstable, more alive. And it's accelerating, heading toward perihelion on October 29th at breakneck speed, nearly 68 kilometers per second. Some predict it will fragment, others expect it to collapse under solar pressure, but a few believe it's entering a new state that the green glow is not a death rattle, but a signal. Maybe it's just a comet. Maybe it's something stranger, a relic from a dead system, a shard from a collision we'll never witness, or a traveler, transformed by the dark between stars. But whatever it is, it's rewriting the rules, not breaking them, revealing them. Peeling back the surface of what we thought we understood and replacing it with questions, bigger, deeper, older. So we'll keep watching, we'll keep asking. And if you want to keep exploring with us, as the sky gets stranger and the stars speak louder, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and tell us what you think 3i Atlas is. Because sometimes, space doesn't whisper, it warns.